Sometimes you find something in a video game that should never been seen by anyone, nor should it ever be seen again. This is why today we're diving into the strangest removed content from video games that we were never supposed to find. Brought to you by World of Tanks. New players can download and register for free right now using my link down below to receive 250k credits, a premium medium tank Cromwell B, three round tanks for 10 battles each, and seven days premium access right now. World of Tanks is an extremely addicting and hugely fun free to play online multiplayer game that keeps the action fresh and exciting with over 800 kinds of tanks and over 40 massive battlefields with tons of players as you blow each other to pieces in every direction and strategically gripping yet fast paced combat. Don't forget to register for free using my link down below with a free 250k credits, a premium medium tank Cromwell B, three rental tanks for 10 battles each, and seven days premium access only available for new registered users. Marvel Spider-Man 2 Thanks to CLK, Jack St. Wolf, Max on the Moon, and Norway Duck for submitting this mystery through the Oddheader Discord and Reddit. Spider-Man 2 released at the end of 2023 as the third entry in the Somniac's Web Slinger series, quickly becoming the best-selling PlayStation 5 game ever. With its success, fans have been hungry for any news about DLC of the game or any of Insomniac's upcoming projects, with a ransomware group going as far as leaking the studio's data to reveal all of their upcoming games, including an early build of a Wolverine game. However, a discovery was also found in Spider-Man 2 four days after release that also seemed to reveal more about Insomniac's future plans than they were intending. In the game, CLK Zins on Reddit managed to get out of bounds using a glitch. Sure enough, by crawling up a sewer pipe, they found what appears to be the villain Craven's lair. CLK Zins wasn't able to get inside the lair. However, Norway Duck was able to get a closer look with a glitch utilizing their web line, which put them right smack dab in the middle of Craven's crib, complete with spikes all around the room and a throne surrounded by skulls. There are also these decapitated head trophies on the wall, one of which appears to be the Spider-Man character Rhino, and three smaller heads which players believe may be Shocker, Vulture, and Scorpion. Strangely, while the other characters are in the game, Rhino never actually appears in Spider-Man 2, meaning why he appears out of bounds is a complete mystery, although from the look of things he was originally going to die and be made into a trophy, which some have speculated was changed as Insomniac possibly decided to have Rhino return in a later installment. Insomniac seemingly caught word of this, as just a couple weeks later, Norway Duck sent me a message saying they issued a patch that made it impossible to clip out of bounds by the docks where players had previously gotten to the Craven Room. Luckily, Norway Duck found another spot to clip under the map and reached the Craven Room. Oh, now it's gone. Well, so much for that. Hide it all you can, but we can't unsee what we just saw. Grand Theft Auto 3. Thanks to f***ing Reese for submitting this mystery on oddheader.com. 2001's Grand Theft Auto 3 is one of the most influential games of all time, being the first 3D game in the series and also revolutionizing the open world concept. Despite this, many changes were made in the game leading up to release, though one change has left some fans completely scratching their heads. YouTuber Vadim M reports that in the PlayStation 2 strategy guide by Brady Games, there's a pre-release screenshot from the game in the Staunton Island area that contains a strange object. While we can't fully see the object from this image, there appears to be a giant head attempting to photobomb the scene. Now why is that there? An image of the full object can be seen more clearly in issue 69 of Power Station magazine and what the? The caption for the image says that the screenshot is part of the mission Espresso to go. However, in the final game, the creepy face doesn't appear anywhere during the mission, or at all. Strangely, the screenshot in the Power Station guide was actually published a few months after the game came out, suggesting it possibly came from a press build that still had this thing in it, and also that Rockstar likely came very close to leaving this in the actual game. I'm not sure why they would have even dedicated effort to such a change so late in development, but honestly, I'm glad they removed it. Now that's an odd head. Pokemon Red and Blue. Red and Blue released in 1998 for the Game Boy as the first Pokemon games released outside of Japan. In the game, you meet Professor Oak, a former Pokemon trainer who gives you your first Pokemon and sends you on your quest to catch them all, helping you along the way. Seems like a pretty nice dude, right? Not according to evidence still left in the game that shows that may have not have always been the case. In the files of the game is data for a final boss battle with Professor Oak, which players believe would have taken place at the very end of the game after you become champion. Based on the high stats of Oak's Pokemon. The battle never occurs in the official game, yet players found a way to activate it using either a glitch or the cheat code 01E2DACF with a Game Shark. This replaces the trainer you're talking to of Professor Oak, who you can then have an epic showdown with. Why players were originally supposed to battle Professor Oak is still unknown, as there isn't any dialogue for the battle in the data. However, we may have an idea based on other clues in the game, such as a message at his computer stating that he was once the champion before becoming your professor, or that he has the hot 
nuts for your mom. As it became a running gag among fans of the Pokemon TV series that Professor Oak may have sent Ash out to catch all the Pokemon just so he could get closer to his mom, as Oak is frequently found hanging out with Delia Ketchum, though it does often seem like they're doing a lot more than just hanging out. How come you two are here? We'll explain that later. Which is why the game developers may have originally planned for players to fight him at the end of Red and Blue, as the player character's mom does appear in the game, and is the one that tells you Professor Oak is looking for you. Oh hell no, did Professor Oak get it on with my mom? Yeah, this dude's going down. Dark Souls 3. Thanks to Wolfie for submitting this through the Odd Hatter Discord. Dark Souls 3 is the final installment in From Software's action RPG series, released in 2016 for PS4, Xbox One, and Windows. The game was the fastest selling title from Bandai Namco, until it was later beat by its successor Elden Ring. And like Elden Ring, Dark Souls 3 holds many secrets and cut content. In Dark Souls 3, the player fights the boss Osiris, who talks to his child Ocelot, who he cradles in his arms and says he will not give him up because Ocelot is all that he has. Except he can't even be seen here, so it's left up to the player to interpret whether Osiris is holding an invisible child, or maybe if Osiris has gone mad and there's no child there at all. During the fight, Osiris proceeds to call out to Ocelot and ask him to show himself, which never actually happens. I'm starting to think Osiris lied about having a kid for the tax benefits. However, you can still hear the baby crying throughout the boss fight, which honestly is pretty creepy. Yet hacker Lance McDonald found cut content in the day of the game that would have made this scene even creepier. In the data, Lance found the alpha version of the fight with Osiris, which is what this part of the game would have looked like when From Software sent the game to playtesters. Swapping the alpha model of Osiris into the final game, Lance shows that Ocelot does indeed exist, and is an infant in Osiris' arms. Osiris continues to hold the baby throughout the fight, until... So much for not letting anyone take Ocelot away from him. I think I can see why this ended up removed. While that at least solves the mystery of why this content was cut, it still doesn't explain whether Ocelot was completely removed from the final game, or if Osiris is still holding an invisible Ocelot. Though after seeing this, I really hope he was removed. WWF Warzone. Thanks to Mr. Zombay and Optometer for spinning this discovery on the Odd Header Discord and in the comments of my latest video. WWF Warzone released in 1998 for the PlayStation N64 and Game Boy, back before WWE was forced to change their name to avoid confusion with the World Wildlife Fund, as they wouldn't want anyone to think that they were actually wrestling pandas. Warzone is finally remembered by fans as the first 3D wrestling game based on WWE, also the first to accurately simulate a real-life wrestling match and allow players to create their own wrestlers from scratch. Although what may be the most interesting character during the game was hidden from players and was only uncovered in December 2023, 25 years after the release of the game. Over the years, developers had mentioned in interviews that a secret pasta mode was somehow hidden in the game, and that it would land many people at publisher Acclaim in big trouble if players ever found it. Guess they weren't allowed to eat too many carbs over at Acclaim, which sounds like they were pretty much asking players to find it, but hardly anything was known about the pasta mode, except that it was mentioned on a cheat list that can be seen using a game shark. That is, until last month, when Atomator on my Discord server decided to take take a look through the date of the game to see if they could find anything. Atomator was able to confirm that both the PS1 and the N64 versions of the game contained pasta mode, although nothing seemed to happen when they activated it. At that point, they used the PSXP rev file extractor to scan the files of the PlayStation game, and sure enough, they found the textures of a woman. Um past the point of wearing clothes. Atomator also found that the textures fit a female character model in the game, named Pamela. The character, who can be unlocked in the PlayStation version with a Game Shark or in the N64 version by winning the WWF title as the character Sue, is reportedly based on an employee of the developer Iguana West, also named Pamela. Though considering when this game came out, Atomator believes it's possible the character is actually based on Pamela Anderson, which if that's the case, no matter which Pamela it is, that would certainly explain why the developers said possibly mode could get them into some serious trouble. If the original pasta mode can still somehow be accessed, or if it was completely removed from the game, is still unknown. However, the biggest mystery remains. What does any of this have to do with pasta? Alundra. Alundra is a Japanese RPG released in 1997 for the PlayStation. The game follows the silent protagonist Alundra, who has the ability to enter people's dreams as he attempts to save residents of a village from nightmares that are killing them. Alundra was ported to North America in 1998 by American publisher Working Designs, who is known for a fair bit of controversy regarding their game translations. While Working Designs brought many Japanese RPGs that otherwise no one would have known about to North America, the publisher also added their own humor and pop culture references to the games. 
mainly with dialogue from NPCs, which many deemed inappropriate even for the time. It's no surprise then that Sony stepped in when Alundra was published, and made working designs cut some of the humor, such as some dialogue for the character Maya. In the final game, after Maya allows you to climb onto her head to reach a ledge, Maya says, I told you I'd give you a head start, which isn't the worst pun I've ever heard. However, working designs originally had planned for her to say this, you are lucky I give good head lover boy. Most girls would ask that you cough up a ring first. Not hard to see why Sony didn't want that line in the final game, though that didn't stop some other questionable dialogue from making it into a Lundra, such as this. The faith of a few and a little weed is all we need, bro. Well, I guess Sony couldn't argue with that one. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy The Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is a remaster of the first three Crash Bandicoot games, released as a PS4 exclusive in 2017, then later released on PC, Switch, and Xbox One. Players digging around the files of the game notice some assets that didn't appear in the original games, nor do they seem to belong in the remastered edition either. The files include several unused characters that seem to have nothing to do with Crash Bandicoot at all, which are shown here courtesy of hacker and YouTuber ARD. The first unused character, called Blaster Tech in the files, appears to be a hair with a vacuum thing and apparently has this green glowing ability. There's also Bruiser Undead who appears to be an undead ice hockey player with freeze powers and Wrangler Fire, a warrior on a crazy firefox looking thing. The file names of these characters have made some believe they belong in the Skylanders universe, which would make sense considering the series is made by the same developers as Crash and runs on the same engine. Weirdly though, there also exists separate red and blue models for all of these characters, which possibly suggests a cut multiplayer feature. ARD tweet about this discovery, which attracted the attention of Dave E. Phillips, former concept artist for Vicarious Visions, who said these look familiar, and shared some early concept art for the characters along with the hashtag Crash Bandicoot, but refused to clarify more, further confusing what these characters were intended to be used for. Even stranger, none of these characters are able to interact with most of the game, which would further suggest they were intended to be used for something else, except for one character, Bruiser Undead, who can use his ice ability to freeze the hippos. Well, that's something, I guess. ARD explored the data further and found a file called Character Listing, which listed the unused characters as well as a new character template legacy, which turned out to be this untextured dude who has an attack that's just doing this. I hope this one was never intended for the final game. If this guy was in any way supposed to face off with these other characters, I'm not confident he would have lasted very long. Bully. Thanks to the Nathan NS for submitting this discovery through the Odd Header Discord. Bully released in 2006 as a PlayStation 2 exclusive, becoming controversial as politicians spread panic about the game encouraging children to become bullies, even though the game is actually about defending yourself against bullies. However, Bully Modder and YouTuber the Nathan NS found something in the scholarship edition of the game that definitely would have scared parents who were shocked by a game about confronting bullies in the schoolyard. The scholarship edition released in 2008, remastered Bully for the Xbox 360, Wii, and Windows, adding tons of new content like missions, characters, and minigames. In the art class minigame, players must move their pencil around the screen while avoiding enemies to reveal a sketch in the end, which for some reason features your art teacher in progressively seductive poses. Um, while the enemies encountered are normally scissors and erasers, Nathan NS was modding the game when they found... What the? Nathan found that a creepy moon face appeared at random, which they say eventually despawns and then respawns again. It's unknown why this is here and what this creepy face's original intent was in the game. Though maybe the creepy moon from Majora's Mask just really wanted to check out the artwork. South Park, the fractured but whole. Thanks to XX Benny Boy Gamer XX for submitting this discovery on oddheader.com. South Park The Fractured But Whole, oh I get it, is an RPG based on the Comedy Central animated series released on Windows and consoles in 2017. The game follows the characters as they split into two rival superhero factions and was well received by players for its tactical combat system, which includes interesting mechanics such as manipulating time with your farts, which can also be used to access new areas. However, one area in the game cannot be accessed even by ripping ass, as Household Warrior discovered a secret involved in mysterious cabin seem to bring the crunch DLC. Normally the cabin is boarded up and we never access it at any point in the DLC, but Household Warrior managed to uncover an unfinished cutscene in the date of the game that suggests this wasn't always the case. In the scene, two new camp counselors claim they were wrestling with their clothes off when they got stuck in these saw-like traps that will drop blades on them if they move. Household Warrior also found concept art in the data that shows the counselors tied to different traps and in the cutscene, and the messages on the wall imply players would have had to choose which one to save. However, However, a trap by the door shows that whoever escaped wouldn't have lived for long. Voice lines for this cutscene found later seem to confirm this fate, with the counselors revealing their true feelings for each other as they perish. You, f you, f you, f 
Household Warrior eventually managed to hack their way into the cabin, finally revealing what it looks like on the inside six years after the game's release. Inside the cabin, we can see the final version looks nothing like the concept art, and instead it looks like the counselors were both killed by the knife trap. Kind of creepy. As well as, who the hell is this? No idea why there's a dead person in a hazmat suit here, but knowing South Park, I'd imagine it had something to do with the fart mechanic. Star Wars Jedi Survivor Thanks to Shadow Reaper for submitting this discovery on the Odd Header Discord. Jedi Survivor released in 2023 as a sequel to Jedi Fallen Order. The game was developed by Respawn Entertainment, also known for Titanfall, Apex Legends, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, and apparently also a mysterious unannounced game, as Shadow Reaper found in the data of Jedi Survivor. In the file, Shadow Reaper found many unused assets from Fallen Order, as well as a folder labeled Z Do Not Ship. Well, it's a little late for that. The folder contains assets from Survivor as well as a completely different game that doesn't look like it belongs in the Star Wars universe at all, called Killing Frost. Not much is known about Killing Frost except that it includes mechanics for a flashlight, rope zip lines, and something called a heat sword, which if you ask me kind of sounds like a store brand lightsaber, further confusing why these Killing Frost assets were found in the folder alongside assets for Survivor. Shadow Reaper also found assets for a radio tower, a gas station, and an office, as well as evidence that Killing Frost runs on Unreal Engine 4.11 the same engine that most Respawn games run on. However, 4.11 is an older version released in 2016, meaning Killing Frost could have been in development way earlier than Survivor. Looking at Respawn Entertainment's upcoming projects, we can see they have four unnamed games, three of which are Star Wars titles and the other being a new game by Titanfall director Steve Fukuda. The Killing Frost assets don't seem to clearly belong to any of these games, meaning Shadow Reaper may have uncovered an abandoned or canceled game that was truly never meant to be found. While the inclusion of a heat sword certainly makes it look like it could be one of those Star Wars games. I'm not sure if I've ever seen a Star Wars featuring a day in the office or a pit stop at a gas station, which perhaps suggests it's a scrap title or some other proto-content for what eventually became Jedi Survivor. Otherwise, it may be the Steve Fakuda game with the unannounced name, in which case I guess we now know it's called Killing Frost, which if I'm correct on that, Steve, I'm sorry. Please don't be angry. And thanks again to World of Tanks for sponsoring this video. What I love about World of Tanks is its commitment to ultra-realism and historical accuracy, while delivering non-stop explosive combat with high quality and smooth gameplay. Download and register for free on World of Tanks today using my link down below to receive 250k credits, a premium medium tank Cromwell B, and 7 days premium access as well as 3 rental tanks for 10 battles each, which includes a Tiger 131 Tier 6 German Heavy Tank, a T-78 Tier 6 American Tank Destroyer, and the Type 64 Tier 6 Chinese Premium Light Tank. Only available to new players who register through the Wargaming portal. Existing players can also receive 3 days premium access, the Bargain 2D style camouflage, a 7 day rental of the premium tank Centurion Mark 5-1 RACCO, or 100k credit compensation if you already have the tank in your garage. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please subscribe. And if you know of any more cut content and video games that you'd like to see me cover, submit through oddhair.com, come join the Discord, or even send me a shout through Reddit or X. Shout out to Angel the Fox, Ash Photography, Bitwiff27, Black EV50, Chad Biscuits, Ed Moffat, Eddie Talkspin the Bleach Primid, Flex, Kieran Bolton, The Meatly, Phoenix157, Rackman22, Red Team Medic, Riley S, Robert Eisenman, Roll Got Me Fula, Select, Starcore2, Taryn Stock, and Towerizer for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.